Hello, everyone, and welcome to Beers and Boost. I'm Barry. I'm Zach. And I'm Nathan. All right, and this week we're doing World War Beer Round 2 of the Americans. Mm -hmm. Man, we've still got a long way to go. Yeah. Uh, but this week we've got four beers in front of us. We are doing Yingling, the original, Stone's Arrogant Bastard, and New Belgium's Voodoo Ranger. But we've got a fourth special beer. For those who live in the uh, Midwestern Missouri, Arkansas region, you may know a little brewery called Mother's. Well, they had a special release uh, on the February 15th in the tap room only called Azakov's Gate, a Russian Imperial Stout. I just happened to randomly be going that weekend and <laughs> lucked into getting a bottle. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what we find out about a nice Russian Imperial Stout from one of my favorite breweries. I do like a good Riz. All right. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and just start up on it. Yeah, we're going to start. Uh, let's uh, let's some... split up the IPAs with the Yingling. Sure. So, let's uh, go ahead and just do Voodoo Ranger. Yeah. Did we not want to do any beer news? There is oh. quite a bit of beer news, actually. Okay, never mind. Go ahead. Well, uh, well, actually, it's kind of sad news. Yeah. Uh, to start off, uh, the oh, yeah. uh, uh, the Molson yeah, Coors Brewery in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, there was a shooting uh, there this week. Uh, five people, five employees were killed, uh, and a sixth, the gunman, actually turned the gun on himself, and he was also an employee of the brewery. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a lot of contention since uh, the merger. Uh, with Molson and Coors, uh, and uh, we have no proof that that's what really led to this, but um, it sucks. Yeah, um, yeah. We kind of feel for everyone. Um, Definitely. Brewers. Brewer industry, beer industry kind of sticks together in that aspect. Mm -hmm. It's it's interesting. I, I was talking with uh, a friend about it um, at work, and they're like, it's kind of one of the last places you'd think we'd see a shooting. Absolutely. Um, so, well, you weren't the only one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem like a, you wouldn't think about it, but I guess really anywhere could be. Yeah. You've got a disgruntled employee. Oh, right yeah. Now. yeah. And it might not have been a disgruntled employee. It might've been, who knows, but, um, we don't know that aspect yet. We just no. know that, uh, gun safety is a huge as issue, huge aspect to, um, you know, concerns about live and it kind of sucks when it brings it so close to home mm -hmm. and that this is one of our entities that we deal with every day yeah so but our thoughts thoughts go out to the people of milwaukee definitely the families that were yeah affected, affected. absolutely so. um oh yeah, we have left field we do have left field but was there another thing of news we wanted to hit on there is one more piece of news that i know of okay. that's depending on your beer preferences might be sad news uh, but Corona has had a massive drop in oh, sales. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I saw this. I kind of laughed. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, And Google has had a massive spike in Corona beer virus searches. Of course they have. Of course they have. I hope there's not people out there that really think Corona virus is Corona beer. They are pronounced the same. Right. But they are spelled massively different. They're also right. two very different things. I mean, you can get sick by having a lot of Corona. I mean, you could have one corona, you can get sick, but it's not going to be life-threatening. Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> uh, I will say there was a kind of falsely mis uh, a misguiding poll that said that 38% of Americans said that they would not drink corona now due to the virus. Uh, I mean, I would have said, yes, I won't drink it, but not because of the virus. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, it was it was a misconstrued poll. It said uh, the poll really said that 38% of Americans said they they just wouldn't drink beer. So, gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> in general, yeah, uh, accurate. I believe uh, up until they they learned more about what the actual virus was, four percent of Americans thought it came from Corona. Hmm. So, hmm. Uh, that's a bigger number than I would. It's want a bigger number be. than you want, but <laughs> uh, I I have to admit, like the only thing I know that says is Corona is the beer. I actually yeah. know someone named Corona, but spelled massively different from both. Well, and I also know the park in Brooklyn, New York, and that's about it. Yeah. Actually, it's in Queens. So, um, he's just going in. He's just drinking. Uh, <laughs> Yingling's good. So, fuck off. <laughs> so, this coronavirus. <laughs> so, coronavirus uh, does kind of lead into my left field. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so it's 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 a virus. It's 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 not actually named after Corona, but that doesn't mean that there aren't. It's named after the um, abbreviation for the actual virus, right? Like, isn't it no. C O R dash V nineteen or something? COVID nineteen is the actual virus. Coronavirus is a type of virus. So this okay. is a novel coronavirus. Mm -hmm. COVID nineteen. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. Yes. Uh, so, but that doesn't mean that there aren't things that you can. Uh, 
there aren't safety hazards when it comes to beer uh, issues that you yeah. might have. So the first one, just going off the names, uh, the first one that I could think of was Heineken hernia. <laughs> Hmm. When you're lifting too many cases of Heineken. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, see where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> There's Sam Adams SARS. That's a different one. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> On that's, topic. Uh, that's kind of a communicable disease that uh, actually results in you having a Boston accent accidentally. <laughs> that's yeah, that's yeah. Uh, but not life threatening. No. 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 Maybe cultural threatening? Maybe if you're in New York. Yeah. 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 Uh, Boston. Then there's Lagunitas Lassa fever. Um, that's a weird one. Uh, that's really just a West Coast thing. Um, yeah, that Lassa fever. Yeah. Then you have Old Rasputin hemophilia. And that actually was just an actual thing. Uh, <laughs> for those that don't remember, Rasputin was brought in to treat uh, the young Tsar, Tsar, uh, Tsar's son, uh, Alexei, who had hemophilia. Mm hmm. And really, he just hypnotized him. So, but beware, you might get hypnotized. From so, the goodness. From the goodness of old Rasputin. <laughs> it is good beer. No, uh, I have to admit that I didn't come up with any of those. My wife went on a rant one morning <laughs> when she didn't want to work. And uh, it was slightly brilliant. And she sent me an entire spreadsheet of them. <laughs> spreadsheet uh, of them? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So <laughs> I was like, you just did not want to work today. She goes, nope. I had that exact <laughs> issue last week, not two weeks ago, and I was just like, I texted you guys, and I was like, I don't want to work today. <laughs> As I was not sitting at my desk talking with someone in a different department, because I didn't want to do any work that day. Yeah. I I don't recommend, though, uh, I, I actually had someone that worked for me at one point that just came into my office one time and was just like, yeah, I'm just not going to do anything today. You don't tell your I'm boss like, that. I'm I'm your boss. <laughs> yeah, you kind of want to. If you kind of want to be the boss in that position, yeah. or be on a really, really good relationship with your boss, right? Or just know that you don't actually have anything to do that day, right? Like it's all been done; it's already been taken care of. I kind of don't want to do anything else now. <laughs> so, but I, I just, uh, I am one that I genuinely enjoy making light of a of a of a bad time. Oh yeah, uh, sometimes you have to, yeah. and uh, it is scary. I, I will I will say some some bright sides of the coronavirus outbreak are really that the the death toll is really small compared to how many people have actually uh, contracted the disease yeah, um, it's compared, a, to the flu, is, compared to the flu compared to the flu compared to survival rate at the moment actually even compared to the common cold um yeah. it is it is low so the only um, thing that's really really bad about the coronavirus is that you can have it for three or four days mm -hmm. and be contagious mm -hmm. and not even know that you have it where with the flu you're only contagious when you have a fever the the right. the, the contagious yeah. aspect of it is the biggest yeah. thing it's just a very and, widespread you know it may not affect you that harshly but if you're infecting you know the elderly or the mm -hmm. young that could be bad that's who's them. gonna yeah get a real big fact and with no vaccine or cure at the moment at the moment so yeah. one of life's lessons that we should say is just never hang out with old people or children i live by that daily yeah I'm with you. I agree. <laughs> so let's move on to some beer finally. All right. Zach and I have been tasting as you go, Nathan, but we're going to start with that Voodoo Ranger down there. The Voodoo. Him in the can, and I'll do the reading. I mean, you do the Voodoo her. that you do so well. Okay. Voodoo Ranger, Imperial IPA from a New Belgium. We are looking at, I think this is 9%. They brew so. in Colorado and Boulder, Col Fort Collins, Colorado, and Asheville, North Carolina. Imperial IPA, uh, see from the bottle for the enjoy by date. And uh, yeah, I think it's 9%. They actually don't put it on this. They put it on the bottle and on the, on the box. So they have pretty much nothing on there. But this is the new version of what used to be Rampant and Ranger. Or Ranger and Rampant. Rampant was the double IPA and Ranger was the regular IPA. I um, This might be the IPA I've had like third most in my life. I've had a lot of this. Such a light, light color for a double IPA. Oh, look, they finally actually put it on there. It's 9%. <laughs> it's really, really small, and my eyes can't see that. But it's just what you expect from an Imperial. Um, yeah. Um, it's There is some, uh, with it being an Imperial IPA, you still get that bitter. You still get that, mm -hmm. that distinct bitterness. Um, that we get out of uh, the hops from the IPA. Uh, the sweetness is there, though, with mm -hmm. the alcohol. Most of the uh, little citrusy, woody, piney. Mm -hmm. Lots of citrus. 
mm-hmm. but uh, not over the top like a citrus IPA or like a hazy IPA. Just like no. the citrus notes of it's got some cascade in it, probably, or a little bit of citra. Probably uh, citra. But it's very, very bitter. Uh, it's very, very surprisingly earthy bitter with a hint of malt um, for it to be a double IPA with little color. It's got a lot of malt characteristics to it, but that really accentuated by the very earthy um, tonality of the bitter, mm-hmm. which means it could be like a centennial or a magnum or something like that. There is, um, uh, it, it's, we tend to see either citrusy or earthy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and this has both. Yeah. You don't really get them together, uh, but it's, Double IPAs, for those who don't know, there is a great, it's a great bitter beer with more alcohol, uh, but Quite double IPAs more. are going to be your most bitter beer you're probably ever going to drink, mm-hmm. other than a triple IPA. Um, those can get sweet, though. They can get very sweet. This finishes with a very, very good, solid, dry bitter at the end, but sweet up front. Uh, it's extremely well balanced. I mean, we put it up on our Instagram a week ago, just saying this is a damn solid double IPA, and it is. Mm-hmm. It's a fantastic double IPA. If you haven't had one... I mean, it's this is a great entry into that yeah. next nuanced hoppy level. And at least locally, like this is one that I constantly find myself buying if I don't want to buy a six pack, mm-hmm. um, because the bombers are at every liquor store mm-hmm. uh, and even Walmart. Not when I got this, um, yeah. but also they're cheap. Yeah, I mean, I bought it's a two bucks. a twelve pack can for nine ninety nine. No, that was oh, for the, the six, six pack. Is it still. was sixteen bucks, so just a little over a dollar a beer for a nine percent beer. And that's the same price as Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Mm-hmm. Same price, and eighteen dollars. I prefer this over Pale Ale, but sometimes I don't want to get hammered. Yeah, because so, you will yes. pretty quickly on a nine percent beer. Yeah, when you have four and realize, oh shit, those were nine percent. <laughs> but I think as far as our World War beer goes, it's a, I think it's a great beer. Mm-hmm. I mean, we talked about why America is so popular or the american beers are so popular in europe right now is because they want the american hop bitter and i think this is a great example of how mm-hmm. you can provide a hoppy good ipa american ipa because it's a very quintessential i would probably say that you should give a regular ipa to people over a double ipa well, but this is the start definitely. this is a great double ipa and i do think um unlike a lot of doubles or uh uh, Imperials that we see on the IPA stuff. This doesn't have anything that kind of on a safety aspect, like you mentioned, like you can have four, mm-hmm. you can have them pretty quickly and yeah, easily absolutely. because easy there's nothing about this beer that is like hard to drink. Absolutely. Uh, usually when we do have a heavier, heavier beer, it's going to be a hazier beer. It's going to be a thicker mouthfeel. It's going to be a darker, uh, more complex consistency. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be just something you're going to drink slower. Mm-hmm. This is a clear i mean it it looks like i don't know it looks like a pilsner pilsner yeah, yeah. It, i mean it's clear it's clear as clear as the yingling in yeah. a lighter yeah. color yeah which mouthfeel on this is just a pilsner something easy to drink yeah. there's a lot more flavor yeah. there but yeah this is not founder solid gold nope <laughs> this is nine <Definitely> percent <laughs> <laughs> but it goes down like solid gold yeah it does Move if on you to like those flavors the yingling uh yingling is America's oldest brewery. Uh, we just recently got them in Arkansas. Been about a year now, Thankfully. or two years now. Uh, by the time the podcast started, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, we've had them on the podcast before, and um, I don't see why we shouldn't have them for World War Beer. Yeah, and if I'm going to drink something, just a plain lager from a big brewery that's really cheap to buy, I'm not going to get Bud Light. I'm not going to get Budweiser. I'm not going to get Coors. I'm just going to get you're going to get something with some flavor, right? And it contrasts it, it is so much better after having an ipa wow hmm. yeah like <laughs> because it's so different i mean it's it's lager versus ale it's bitter versus lager yeast and everything like that it's so so Ready. drinkable after that you almost i almost recommend pairing them yeah i mean they both get the berry shrug like seriously like the yingling has the flavor enough flavor and enough there to you could drink 12 of them oh, i mean yeah. hell we have zach and i have in <laughs> one night um but <laughs> i mean i did it also with sam we only had 10 that day but there was also some patron and crown but cracking that was a it's rough night. it's got flavor to it it does like you said and it off off balances or offsets the double ipa very well mm-hmm. um you get that nice malty 
little bit of actual malt flavor to it. You get just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of bitter, but it finishes so clean and so smooth and yeast, a good yeast flavor to it. Like it is just a balanced lager. It's mm-hmm. definitely not the best lager we've had. And I, Hard as far Sam as, Smith. yeah, as far as like, <laughs> would it go on as an American lager? Maybe. We haven't really had too many lagers on yet. Mm-hmm. We've got more American beers to go, but I think this is a damn good American lager, and I hope that there are people out there who have tried it and realized that some of the things like Miller and Budweiser and Michelob Ultra are not what is American lager. This is a truer sense of an American lager than mm-hmm. anything else. If anything, those are twice-removed attempts at European lagers. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, and American lagers... We have bolder flavors. Mm-hmm. Always. Absolutely. Um, That's America. That, what are we? We're the now, bolder version of everything. I would say the technical skill on those some of those Europeans that we really liked mm-hmm. kind of blows some of the people that we like away. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but when you've been brewing since 1040. I mean, uh, Vine Softener. We got... didn't have a single bad beer from Vine Softener. No, yeah. I really want to get more of them too. Yeah, I got one. It was really damn good with those tacos, by the way. Oh, that would be good with tacos. Chico's might be open today. <laughs> but anyway, <Okay. laughs> Yingling, really, really, really good. We'll take our second sip around just to mm-hmm. see what we think. We um, do have the thermometer. Um, we're at eight minutes. But uh, let's move it on to the Arrogant Bastard. All right, you do the drinking. I'll do the reading. I, I almost didn't want to hand it to him. I just wanted it. <laughs> Look at the head on this thing. I know, it was a beautiful pour. <laughs> and it's not even all gone. There's still a little bit more in the bottle. Uh, can. This is an aggressive beer. You probably won't like it. It's quite doubtful that you even have a taste or sophistication to be able to appreciate an ale of this quality and depth. We would suggest that you stick to a safer and more familiar territory. Maybe something with a multi-million dollar ad campaign aimed at convincing you it's made in a little brewery or one that implies that their tasteless, fizzy yellow beer will give you more sex appeal. Perhaps you think multi-million dollar ad campaigns make a beer taste better. Perhaps you're not mouthing your words as you read this. I actually am, but I'm reading aloud. <laughs> we believe that pandering to the lowest common denominator represents the height of tyr- yeah, tyranny and a virtual form of keeping the consumer barefoot and stupid. Brought forth upon our unsuspecting public in 1997, Arrogant Bastard Ale openly challenged the tyrannical overlords who were brazenly attempting to keep Americans chained in the shackles of poor beer taste. Since the very beginning, Arrogant Bastard Ale has reve- reveled in its unprecedented and uncompromising celebration of intensity. There have been many nods to Arrogant Bastard Ale, even outright attempts to copy it. But the only one ever embody the true nature of liquid arrogance. Arrogant Bastard, 7%. Stone, as we mentioned many a time, actually 7.2%. As we mentioned many a time on here, this is one of the best buys because you get six of those at mm-hmm. almost seven and a half percent for twelve dollars. That's a hell of a steal. I think it's only ten. I've seen it at nine ninety nine. I've only ever seen it for eleven ninety nine, but I've seen like fourteen dollars as well. Yeah. But generally eleven ninety nine. Anyway, what do you guys think? I talked for a while. Yes, great head on that. They like just went for the throat with that. <laughs> mm, mm-hmm. I mean, somewhat literally, the the back end is just still there. Yeah, it's it Ooh. lingers. It's better. It's it's an American strong ale, right? Yeah, which yeah. is um, oh man, the grass pine from that sip right there. Oh, dude, if you want a beer entirely with dark bitter flavors, this is it. Earth, earth punch. Yeah. Like literally, it's not grassy, but it. Reminds you of grass and it's leaves. Mineral. It's minerals. It's, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Man, that I always forget how long that can linger. The head is creamy. The mouthfeel is light, but yet thick at the same time. The Just to clarify, American Strong Ale is, one, if you look at it, that color. Like that red, copper, slight brown color. Just and then... The lights behind them. Yeah. <laughs> the flavor profile of it and it's based on a basic ip that's why it's so bitter but for it to have around about 100 ibus is roughly what arrogant bastard has is right around that 100 ibu range that would be double ipa strength of Mm -hmm. ibu level so it's much more bitter 
It's with very the, roasty. With uh, other flavor profile, not just hops and a little bit of clear malt. This has got some dark malt with some color, with some effect, and then a just fucking gut punch of bitter. Mm -hmm. It is not for the weak. Which and I think is they, what they said. Say. Yeah. Yeah. So if you've never had something this strong and you don't like bitter beer, this is not for you. No. I would not go out and buy a six pack of this when you're used to Yindling or yeah. Coors or whatever. Yeah. Or even just like a pale ale. Like you've only had a pale ale. This is yeah. 10 times bitter than a regular pale ale. But if you are a bitter beer fan and you like heavy, strong, delicious beer. Yeah, um, delicious. Um, a, I recommend drinking this every now and then because it is relatively inexpensive for what it is. And yeah, pretty easy to find. Pretty easy to find yes. as well because Stone distributes everywhere. Yeah. Watch yeah. out. Don't get the oak barrel aged one. I did not oh, no. like that as much. It is more expensive and not quite as and good. And super sweet. Yeah. Um, but what's nice is there's been just a handful of people that when I say like, oh, yeah, I like a good arrogant bastard every now and then, and they perk up, <laughs> you have a friend for life. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> no, it's, it's a fantastic beer. And I think I don't know if it would be the best beer to give someone as far as like, hey, you like hoppy American beers? Here, try this. Mm -mm. You, you this London pleb. Because <laughs> uh, it's completely different. But, oh, boy, that's good. It's such a good beer. We haven't had it on in a long time. Yeah, it's been sitting in my fridge for a week, and it's been so hard not to just drink it and go buy another six-pack for the podcast. Yeah. Should have. It's good. It's good. <sighs> All right, so let's crush our flavor palette profiles <laughs> with something else. Azakov's <laughs> Gate. It's a Russian Imperial Stout from <laughs> Mother's Brewing. Oak barrel-aged, right? Barrel-aged Russian Imperial Stout brewed with honey aged in oak barrels. Hey. 13%. Now, let's read. Legend holds that in 1989, Russian geologists led by the mysterious Dr. Azikov drilled 14 kilometers through the Earth's crust straight into hell. The tormented screams and damned issued forth and drove many in the party to madness. Azikov's Gate, a Russian imperial stout brewed with honey and patiently aged for two years in Woodford Reserve rye whiskey and double oaked barrels invites you to peer into the all-consuming darkness. The screams you hear won't be the souls of the damned, but your own howls of ecstasy. You can definitely light my breath on fire right now. Golly. Just the write-up on it. And then the fact... I'm not a, I've had Woodford Reserve rye. Um, it's okay. There are better bourbons out there, but... You can taste the... You can taste the barrel. <clears throat> That'll wake you up and then knock your ass down. <clears throat> okay defining characteristics one booze very First and foremost <laughs> i mean you smell it and it's just instant um second i would say uh the the roasted malt flavor I'm blind <laughs> i i can see very time. officially drank himself blind <laughs> uh the roasted malt uh the bitterness coming from that Oh man, there's a sweetness, but it's not overbearing. There's a dryness, but it's not. It's, it's balanced out. Yeah, it is a very well balanced beer, and there's so many different things that you don't expect to go together, like sweet and dry, and bitter and roasty, and yeah. chocolate and earth and oak and vanilla and oh man, drunk. Yeah. <laughs> so. When at the brewery, I was shocked to see this. They had three Imperial Stouts of some kind on tap, and one of them was Winter Grind Imperial. And I was like, I don't necessarily want an Imperial Stout. You can get that here, too. But then I saw this, and I was like, well, I'm going to have to try a Russian. I haven't had a Russian in, like, a long time. Got it. They gave me a snifter. I had already eaten. It wasn't like I had not eaten for a little while. I had already eaten. But it had been a couple of hours. I mean, it takes two hours to get there. Um... But the snifter was 10 ounces, and I think after the first one, I had a buzz going already. I don't doubt. Yeah. Like, it, it, it hits you hard and quick, but it also took me like an hour to drink it. It, mm -hmm. it would take you a whole almost day to drink this bottle. But it is the exact opposite of something ooh. like this. This is so easy, the Voodoo Ranger for audio only. Um, it's, it's light, it's crisp, you can down it. This is thick and. I can still like feel chocolate it. and yeah. 
oh, the flavors are immense. And I think it, we're at, there's there's a, a mental debriefing that happens after each sip. Yes, is like, the way that I would put what it. What just happened it to my definitely body? Definitely is a sipper, not because of the alcohol content or the bitter content or the roasted content. It's because there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. You need time to digest what you just drank. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting right at 52 degrees, which is perfect for a Russian Imperial. So I mean, we're getting the full on flavor aspect right there. It works. Which means we're probably at the same temperature for everybody. Yeah, I think we I think we sat there. Okay. All right. <laughs> Mr. Clean Freak. My mouth's clean. I just had 14% alcohol. Yeah, nothing <laughs> lives in there living. now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a virtual alcohol swab. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's move it back over to the Voodoo Ranger and get right. some actual scores in. Some Voodoo. Oh. Voodoo Ranger. Probably a massive difference in uh, flavor and mouthfeel and profile change. Yeah, is that just a Coors Light? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it does feel it does feel a little tamed after that. <laughs> oh no, it's still good. Um, I mean, it still has a nice little bit of head retention, which mm -hmm. is awesome. Uh, which means they aren't just running with just like pale ale or pale malt and like a little bit of crystal forty. They might have a little bit of something else in there, or they're just really really good brewers. Which this New Belgium uh, is the strength of this uh, this IPA to me is the the bitter back end. Mm -hmm. Um, it's there. It's very aware of itself, but it's not overpowering. And yeah, and it, it emphasizes the balance of the citrus and earthy tones mm -hmm. in this beer. Uh, you get you get vegetation, but you also get that zest. Mm -hmm. Um, pit. nope. Mm, I don't think you get the bitter pithy no, aspect. No, no, oh, you get some definite like. Um, I just want to say pith, like a little bit of a tangerine. You know, uh, I'm going to say it. Don't get pithy. <laughs> A little bit like tangerine zest mm -hmm. uh, mixed with some grassy aspects and a little minerally. Um, like, it's just, it's a damn fine double IPA. Mm -hmm. Very it well balanced. It really is just balanced and fantastic. I mean, how many times they've had a double where it's just like they threw 10 pounds of hops into the glass and thought, okay, double. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I really like this beer. Me too. I think it's really well made. I just well. I'm thinking four two five. I generally go around the four range, but I think for World War beer, just to give it like based on it's a double IPA, this is what Americans would hand out as a double IPA maybe, because uh, New Belgium does definitely distribute across the borders. Um, I think for World War beer score, it gets that four five. For me i think it's just so close to perfect but not quite there i'd like a little bit more nuance to the bitter level i'd like a little bit more flavored uh from hops i like a little bit more of a nose the nose is a little bit lacking to me uh but the mouth feels great the head retention is great the yeast flavor is there it's balanced it's got a lot of flavors i would just like a little bit more and then i like a better nose and that would make it perfect for me so for world war beer i'm going four five I think the front end of this beer, like we said earlier, is where the weakness lies, and it's mm -hmm. not much. Yeah. No. Um, but yeah, I'm going to stick 425. 425 for Nathan. And Zach, you're going 45. 45. So damn good scores for some New Belgium. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, they. this was not going to be a bad scoring day. No, no. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, Even with a cheap beer yeah. on here, like we knew high scores. And we yeah. can't emphasize how much you can get. These are all actually good deals. Oh, yeah, absolutely. like all th all three of the actual World War beer, World beers. War beer beers, yeah, are really good deals. Yeah, because mm -hmm. um, this was. Do we want to do the Yingling? Yeah, next? let's go ahead and yeah. the Yingling. Yeah, I think the Yingling was like two ten for that twenty four ounce can. Yeah, I mean we had it on our we didn't have it on shitty shitty cheap beers, but we did have it on the uh, cheap beers and the loggers episode, mm -hmm. and we almost had it on the uh, cheap quick easy drinking for game game oh, episode. Yeah, we, we almost did we didn't get it but we almost had that it. second rodeo would have won either way yeah sam loved that second rodeo <laughs> it was a really good beer it is a really good beer it's rice beer but hey worked out we've had a what was that one from spain that's a rice beer uh, australia. the australia dom yeah i mean that's a good beer uh that, that was a really yeah, good yeah don't beer. <laughs> don't knock rice <laughs> i mean there's a reason sake is so popular it's rice <laughs> rice wine like there's not there is flavor there, but it's not, there's not a ton. It's just very well, it's easy to drink. 
It's simple. It's right, but it's there. It's I, not lacking. I feel like out of simple original lager style American lagers, yeah, this might be the epitome. This could be the American lager control. Group. Like this is actually going to go up in score in my mind based on how representative it is. See, that's exactly what my argument was getting ready to be. So th- we are basing how good of it is it based on its type of beer? Mm-hmm. Does it meet its requirements on that base of beer? How good is it personal preference wise? Do we like it? Cause we are the judges. And then how good do we think it is a representation of American beer? Cause we do have a second kind of category cause we are Americans. This is our beer that we're giving out to other people. What do we want to show you? Yeah. Um, I think that if we had to pick of an American big boy lager, this is one of the biggest breweries in the country. And besides Sam Adams, it's the only other like huge logger providing like this is their face because stones isn't logger new belgium's face is fat tire um we've got a lot of other people who their face their their icon beer is not a logger brand yeah so between boston logger and yingling is where i'm going to put this down at Ooh. um on that alone boston logger was better boston logger i got, because of how good that one was two weeks ago i went out and bought a six pack because it was, I killed the rest of them. It was the best Boston Lager I've ever had. And I have to say that a second six pack, it was still just as good as that one day that we had on. So Yingling doesn't quite meet up to those standards of Boston Lager. But if you can't find a Boston Lager and you're out in the middle of Spain and the Yingling is right there, you can't go wrong. This is a damn fine beer. And I think it's a great example of what a real american lager can be so i think i gave a four four for um sam adams yeah i gave sam adams a four so that means this gets a 3.75 because it's right there just the sam adams is just a little bit better for a world war beer as an actual beer i think it's a damn solid three damn good i damn good solid lager it was an ipa at a half. i almost said almost ipa because yeah we drink a lot of ipas but it's a very very good lager but for world war beer i think it's a great example of american lagers just not quite as good as sam adams i would agree that i prefer sam adams more um yeah there's more going on with that so i'm gonna probably go three five on this one okay if i'm following that logic mine would be three five all right so still some damn good scores for some yeah that's, that's a great beer someone's favorite beer and a little more absolutely yeah absolutely very good stuff yingling i mean sam got it for a keg for his bachelor party i think over two days the two of i alone drank 50. we had a lot we had a lot of beers we still and didn't I think, float that damn keg i think sam and uh keith and james had god only knows. more than we did by a yeah. lot but that was a that was a full keg too full was keg it? full barrel god it was a lot of yelling. that's a lot of beer yeah. it's a lot of beer <laughs> but it was like over seven guys it was a lot a lot of stuff but yeah. anyway right. arrogant bastard arrogant bastard mm, that's a nose <laughs> and see that's what I would say that the new Belgium is lacking is that nose like I really really enjoy the voodoo ranger but it doesn't have much to the nose it's there but it's not enticing. it's not what a double IPA like no. doozy uh, Mother's Doozy is it not mm. my favorite double IPA, but it might be my favorite double IPA nose. As oh, soon yeah. as you crack the bottle, it's like, whoo. Yeah. And it just hits you. And that's where the Voodoo Ranger lacks. And that's why it didn't get that nice, great score. I had a teller that worked for me one time that recommended Doozy. He's Doozy's sitting next good. to me. Yeah. <laughs> Super Doozy's good, too. <clears throat> you can very rarely find it. Yeah, I did see it this year, but I didn't pick it up, and I regret that decision. Yeah, it comes up like once a year, and you might find it in one in a four yeah. pack. They used to only put it in bombers, but oh, oh. god, the flavor of the arrogant bastard hit me. There was whew. oh, um, not that any of us really care, but I think I can't remember if it was yeah. KBS is now a year round beer, mm. so beer news in the middle. I, of uh, actually, I saw their Instagram post was because uh, I follow founders or we follow founders. Um, damn, Arian Bastard's so good. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, they have a. Uh, they are marketing it now as a special release, whole thing, and then they're putting it out as a year-round thing. KBS ain't that good. I'm sorry. No. Sorry for you fanboys out there who just clamor on about it over and over and over again. But KBS is not that good. It's like the guys that only buy SR20s because it's an SR20. It's the best. No, it's not the best. No, it's not the best. 
just do a turbo ka24 and you're good or get a ca18 you're fine cars made it sway into beers <laughs> that's what i do but uh <laughs> anyway arrogant bastard like the the fact that nathan and i both like offhandedly go oh that's so good mm -hmm. i said it too. resonates well you said it when you were drinking it it took me a minute to capture it but it's just uh i heard something I, go by that was really nice it was a v8 whatever it was i yeah. will say this and I, i'm kind of embarrassed saying it this beer is almost too much for me i was kind of thinking the same if we're going on this is america this is our beer this is what we're going to show you i think this is too intense to show off i agree in that aspect yeah i think for a world war beer it actually loses points mm -hmm. because it's too intense this is a, you've been living in America for like a year, year and a half. You want to. You've been doing the craft beer game. You yeah, know what's you up. You know what we got. Let's go a little deeper. <laughs> yeah. This is our dark web. <laughs> <laughs> How do you score the dark web? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't score it. You don't know it exists. You don't talk about it. Exactly. You've never been on it. This is also our fight club. Um, uh, but there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all very it is intense, multi earthy, alcoholic, and there's not a subtle flavor amongst oh, them. No, it's um, all good flavors. They're just cranked up to eleven. All yeah. of them. Yeah, uh, I actually have a hard time judging this. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and go then. I think okay. I've been the first one for each one now, um, and I'll give my argument for it. Arrogant bastard is basically a five i'm not sure if we gave it a five before it got really high but it is so close to perfect or perfect and like i would never argue if somebody said it's the perfect beer or the perfect double ipa or perfect strong ale whatever for what it wants to be i mean the description on the bottle is you aren't gonna like this it's intense exactly it, it is that it is exactly what stone aimed it to be it is pulled off in perfection as far as that aspect goes it's almost the perfect strong beer. The only thing that I would want a little bit more from it is like subtlety, subtlety, subtlety or <laughs> or more alcohol. Like, yeah, this is bottled toxic masculinity. Yeah, <laughs> pretty like, much. It's either yeah, I want a little more subtle or I want a little bit more booze. Like for it to be seven percent, it mm -hmm. tastes like it should be ten. Like yeah. I honestly, for a long time, thought arrogant bastard was ten. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. actually fairly tame, but that's and, my but only the not barrel problem. aged. I think is. is really close to it. It's yeah. a little higher. Yeah. yeah. And um, that actually might be too much. It probably is. is. It is too much. For me, I anyway. haven't had it since it first came out to Arkansas. So it's been I quite a while. tried it once and I was kind of done. But I think it's a fantastic beer. Like I said, so close to five or five. I wouldn't argue if you did give it a five. I think for me, personal preference wise, it's like a four, seven, five or a five or a four, or five. Mm -hmm. So close to perfect. But for World War beer, I think it has to get knocked down to a four. Maybe even three seven five. I was thinking four, just because it's so over the top that if I gave this to somebody, and I said, "Hey, here's an American craft beer," and they drank it, they may never drink another American craft beer. This is not. Yeah, you don't want to show this off as an American beer. Yeah. If you're trying to get them into your beer culture. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, this is what you want to scare them with. Yes. Right. This is what every American beer is like. Yeah. Yeah. You want to say, "Hey, you've had <laughs> something? Okay, sure, you have. Yeah. Here, drink this." Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I'm going to give it a 4 for World War Beer, but actual score for me is much, much higher, like a 4.75. I was thinking 4.5 for my actual score, but in this scenario, I'm going to go 3.75. Yeah, I can see that. And you said 4 for Nathan? Oh, it didn't type. Oh, no, it did. It right. almost did. <laughs> yeah, 4. Four for Nathan. All right, so we've got <laughs> that's a one. A one. Um, <laughs> we've got some damn good scores. I mean, scores yeah. already entered. Can't change it. Yeah. We've probably got one that's moving on. New Vel new voodoo might move on. Don't know. That Azakov's gates hitting him hard. You said new voodoo. I thought New Belgium and the Voodoo Ranger at the same time. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. <laughs> but um, let's this, go ahead and give this uh, day was going to be dangerous no matter what. Let's right. Go ahead and give Azakov's gate. Because Barry tester. brought this fucking nuke. Oh my God. We cannot not enjoy Mother's goodness, all right? Like, my love for Mother's is immense. There is one of our viewers that I see frequently that constantly gives me shit. Anytime I say, oh, I found a new beer you're going to love, is it Mother's? Like, it's just instant. Like, it's Mother's, you're going to love it. Like, no, that's That's me. Barry. That's me. I love Mother's. They're my favorite. I drive two hours out of, two hours out of my way just to go get 
a burger and fries and mothers mm. because black sheep is those fries. I will talk about it for a minute while you drink that beer. I will tell the story again. I think I told the story already. And I will do it again. When I was dating my wife five, six years ago now, we were laying in bed and I slapped her across just like, wife, I found it. Like midnight, I'm looking at my phone, scrolling through stuff. I found it. I found the recipe for fries. And ever since then, I have based and prog progressed my fry making ability, which Zach can attest to. I make some damn good fries. They're pretty good. Like, they're not the best. They're not the best. Only because black sheeps are the best. Like, my fries would be here, and everybody else's is here. Black sheeps is through the roof. Like, it's it's, it's insane it's how in good frame. they are. Like, they put fucking vinegar on it. They dump <laughs> vinegar on it. Liquid. You'll eat a fry 15 minutes later, and it's still crunchy. Mm -hmm. And it's not a battered fry. Like, what the fuck? I don't know what they do. It's the best fries in the world. Black Sheep Burgers, we are not sponsored. We probably never will be sponsored, but I do have to say, Sponsorous. the owner is a Tottenham fan, <laughs> and it's amazing. Note the hat. Yeah. I think your hand was off for, frame at pointing. For those not familiar with the Premier League, that's Tottenham Hotspur. Yes. Who lost uh, again. It's two losses in a row. It's lost mm -hmm. to Chelsea, lost to Wolves. Oh, we lost to Chelsea? Uh, yeah. She's <laughs> a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that Azakoff's <laughs> gate, though, is fucking good. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Five. Like, five and a half. Six. <laughs> I think he's hanging around the, like, three, five range. <laughs> like, I love Azakoff's gate. I've what are you hanging around? <laughs> Four, two, five. Four, two, five? <laughs> Why? Why so low? I'm putting my... <sighs> I'm putting my personal preference on it. That is too intense. It's super intense, but it is a Russian Imperial Stout that's been oak aged. Right. Like it is meant to be intense, and it it does it. Yeah, I'm gonna go four or five. Um, I'm the low one today. I. I'm gonna say what I think Zach is also thinking, which is that's actually pretty close to being a bad beer. <laughs> okay. If one Do of explain. those. One of the levels was a little high. That's out. If it was like boozier, that was sweeter. that booze limit, like you cannot go more than that. Yeah, no, I agree there. I agree. It is definitely at the peak of booze limit. If 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 it goes, maybe even one percent more than that, we're talking Lagunitas Imperial style. Yeah, it oh. would just not be worth drinking. It would be too much alcohol. Right. Absolutely. Um, but I think the balance of the oak they pulled is, it off very it, well. It's so hard because we had the oak spire from New Belgium, Ooh, which is really good, but it tastes like oak. Mm -hmm. And we've had other Imperial Stouts that have nothing but vanilla to them because they've been aged in bourbon barrels and they taste like vanilla, like yeah. so hard. So I think that it's it's so hard to pull off an oak aged stout. Like we've seen it, we've given so many oak aged stouts on this show like twos because it's pulled off in an improper manner. And that's just why it's a five, for my opinion. I can I, see you guys going lower. It's perfectly fine. It's yeah. just I think they pulled it off as close to... That's right. It is fine. It's my opinion. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I will say this. So it does pull off some things that a lot of beers don't, which is, mm -hmm. A, the vanilla is not overly powerful um, from that oak. Um, I do think... I, I would like a little less booze Yeah. Mm -hmm. in the long run. Um, and that might be coming from the fact that we have so many, like between the two, uh, two other, like the strong ale and the IPA that we have with it today, mm -hmm. we have some things where you're like, well, arrogant bastard, you tweak it a little bit, you age it in barrels and it's 10 mm -hmm. and that might be the right level for this beer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that being said, it's delicious. Like oh, it's, it's yeah. fantastic. I mean, it I gave it, a, I gave it a four or five. That's, that's, I mean, near that's, a, perfect. that's a high score. Yeah. Four or five is a high score. Hey guys, it's Zach from Beers and Boost. I just wanted to let you know that we sadly lost the last little bit of uh, video here. So it's going to be audio only for the last little bit. But we'll have all the kinks worked out next week. Hopefully, we'll try. But, like, I, I really don't know any way to critique it. And that's why it's a five for me. So... But I think, like, if you're if you are someone who lives in the area and you can afford to make that drive up to Springfield, and they have any left, it's or definitely one to try. You could make an effort to get 
a Russian Imperial Stout that is, or an Imperial Stout made by mothers, like they make just damn good beer. Mm-hmm. Like this is a call out for them. This is not in fact a World War beer. Like they don't qualify. Mm-hmm. They don't ship out to even all of yeah. the U.S. This is just like a special one off to have on. So I will also do a little more uh, local beer news, okay. um, which is uh, we've talked about this for a few weeks now because Cigar City now hey does distribute to this area. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cigar City out of Tampa, Florida. Um, I was going to a friend's house last night uh, just for some games and. Um, I wanted to take a beer that I knew uh, they were doing stir fry, so I didn't want to drink wine. So I was definitely getting some beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, no, what I did was uh, I knew that he liked Shot Top. He's okay. a big Shot Top fan. Yeah. Uh, so I got uh, the Florida Cracker. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From Cigar City, uh, and the coriander and the spices in that thing are really fun. So uh, to continue with that story. Um, my wife does not like New Belgium. No. Doesn't like New Belgium. No. Um, Divorce. No, I know, right? <laughs> she, loves, she loves New Belgium. Um, I was thinking of uh, Blue Moon. Mm-hmm. I don't know why New came into Blue, but Moon. Yeah. But anyway, uh, she does it's not big. like those at all. Right. Like, yeah. she They're loved- a good concept. They are not the good version of right. that beer. But right. she had, uh, with those tacos that I made, she had the Varhensoffener, and she gave it a five, which, so I mean, that alone just shows you how damn good Varhensoffener okay, is. divorce is off. Yeah. <laughs> right. There's four fives <laughs> all around, but she said that was the best one out of Cigar City was their Blue Moon knockoff, which is a Florida the name. Cracker. Florida uh, Cracker. Florida Cracker. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a Belgian wit. Uh, with coriander. With coriander and, and uh, orange, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and Highlight is pretty good. And we've had it on. It's a good we, idea. Yeah. We had it on. Did we have it on a second time, though? Cause we that have was, not had it a second time. Because that was when I shipped it from a plane in the cargo hold, and it was kind of eh. Yeah. Well, whenever we get done with World War Beer, we might do High License. They're new, and we Just get all their beers. Cigar City now that we have or, I mean, that's six of Start, them. Yeah, do Cigar City. We'll do a whole episode special. Yeah. yeah. So, But no, I highly recommend it. I mean, give them a shot. They're new. Yeah. So If you're in the area. If yeah. you're in the area. Yeah. Um, so. Go th- go through there. I, again... We are. A, we've had my wife on. Mm-hmm. We are kind of a wine household. I don't really worry about buying too much booze. Yeah. Um, and, but if I buy something, it's typically going to be something I haven't had before. Yeah, I'm kind of the same. Yeah. Unless I'm so. just going to get a staple of the house. Right. Yeah. Right. All right then. Well, that's been uh, World War Beer: The Americas Round Two, and hope you guys are having a great Thursday. Mm-hmm. Thank you. See you later. Have a great week.